All right. I'll just put this in here. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's meetup on ESLTR term stat query. Super excited to have Daniel Worley here again. He was a speaker at uh, the Elastic Conf uh, Community Conference back in February. Uh, Daniel is a relevance engineer at Open Source Connections, um, and he has over a decade of experience working with Lucene in search-related problems. And he's one of the lead maintainers on the Elasticsearch Learning to Rank plugin, which has over a thousand stars on GitHub. So super excited to welcome him back into the Elastic Meetup world, and um, yeah, really excited to to hear from him today. So. Dan, I'll, I'll hand things over to you. All right. Uh, so I think I was already introduced pretty well, so I'll skip most of that. Um, today's talk is about the term stack query in the uh, Elasticsearch LTR plugin. Um, this talks mainly about the new query. We'll talk a little basics of LTR, but if you're unfamiliar with some, some of the LTR concepts, you may get a little lost, but hopefully it's basic enough that most people can follow along. Um, just to start off, uh, what is learning to rank? Uh, the too long didn't read is it's a method of applying machine learning to uh, search ranking problems. Uh, the basic uh, pipeline, if you decide to use LTR, you have to make a feature set. Uh, and then you sort of, if you have your list of judgments, if you don't have those, you have to come up with a list of judgments, but you log features for all the judgments that you came up with. From those, you train a model. Then you would query with the new model, sort of test it out, revise, test it until it's better. And then things are better, right? But uh, that's not always the case. Um, there's a lot of buzz around LTR. Uh, people want to talk about putting it in their search pipeline. Somehow it's instantly going to make things better. It's not the case. Uh, you'll be messing with models, revising models, maintaining your models, figuring that all out. It's going to take some time. So. Uh, it's definitely an uh, interesting approach um, if you're at that stage in your search team, but uh, there's definitely um, some lifting involved, so just be aware of that. Um, a brief history of the plugin. Uh, it started by a former colleague of mine at Open Source Connections. Shout out to uh, Doug Turnbull. If he's out there anywhere, I'm sure some folks know him. Um, we paired with Wikimedia in 2017 to get to version 1 sort of hung out in maintenance mode uh, for a while. Elasticsearch rolls out a lot of versions, so we try to keep up with that and sort of keep our versions up to date with theirs each time they sort of roll new versions out. Uh, we always welcome help with that. If there are any uh, willing contributors out there, feel free to hit us up with some PRs. Um, as far as new features, the term sort query is pretty much the newest thing. So we're maintaining that, sort of trying to improve performance on it. And uh, we're trying to uh, get some new model support, sort of the latest and greatest, uh, maybe like GBM, things like that. Uh, if you have any opinions, feel free to join us on Relevant Slack. Uh, I think I'll have a link for that at the end if uh, you're not on there already. So the main idea behind the term stack query um, is that we want to utilize the term statistics that we have in the postings for our index. And uh, a lot of the times these uh, postings, this data is used in the existing queries, but it's never um, exposed directly uh, via any APIs or queries. It is exposed by APIs, but not at query time. So um, you can hit this term vector API, get all the stats you want for any terms, but that's not very helpful if you want to sort of use these um, numbers at query time. So we wanted to figure out in the LTR plugin, how do we surface this data? Because it's going to be really useful to get these numbers out to use as features in our models. So for version one, if you've been in the um, LTR plugin at all, there was the Explorer query. Um, what this provided was pretty much surface this data that we're talking about, your term positions, your term frequencies, total term frequency, doc frequency, and the inverse doc frequency. Um, these are the things that are commonly used, things in uh, for BM25 currently, TFIDF classically, and then a uh, term position for your um, phrase searches. But what we're sort of providing is the raw values for these. Um, the limitation of this was that it was just kind of all, all hard coded. If you wanted to do something outside of the box, you were kind of stuck. So you would have to brush up on your Java skills and maybe make a new query yourself. Um, maybe submit an issue to us and get lots of people reacting and maybe we'd respond. And of course, we always like PRs. But then we started getting a little too many PRs for kind of 
um, out of the box things that only applied to maybe 1% of the users, if that. So we didn't really want to merge in all these crazy features. So I got a scratch in our heads thinking, how could we take Match Explorer and make it more open and more friendly to our users? So that's where Enter Term Stack Query comes. And it's a nice little sunrise, a ray of hope in the world of LTR. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we have the supported stat types. And if you look at this, it's pretty much the same as what's in the Match Explorer. But what's cool is uh, we've sort of injected these stats to be available inside of loose scene expressions or a painless scripting context. Um, so what this allows you to do is any sort of kind of custom formula you can come up with that's supported in a loose scene expression, you can um, work with it just directly in your query customized to your heart's content. Uh, this example over here is just kind of showing the classic TF times IDF and we can get the uh, max value for the terms Rambo and Rocky. Um, and ultimately, uh, down in quotes, uh, when I first came up with this idea, I had to justify it. So this is a quote by me. <laughs> we basically, I may have already said it, but we wanted to get more uh, freedom to our LTR feature engineers to experiment without going back to the slide. So I think we succeeded with that. Um, just a little, um, comparison of expressions versus scripts. Um, expressions are really low level, kind of simple um, formula support in Lucene. Uh, it's limited to dealing with single float values. And I may have to correct myself, it may be doubles, but uh, you can't do any arrays or anything like that. So we're limited to working with the final aggregation of a uh, whatever um, statistic we're dealing with, um, term position, term frequency, what have you. Uh, so scripts, the answer to that is you can dive into painless scripts where you get all of the data back that we've sort of surfaced inside of the term stack query. So if you need to deep dive, maybe look at where the first term matched compared to the second and return a different value depending on that, that painless opens the door to that. Um, just as a final point, um, Lucene expressions are going to perform just a little better than painless scripts. So we recommend if you're diving in the painless, it's a good platform for experimentation. At the moment, we wouldn't put anything in this into production yet. Depends on the size of your index. If it's smaller, go, go for it. Uh, we welcome new users and we'd like to get more battle tested, but uh, I wouldn't say we're there yet. Um, here's just an example query and I'll go over what this DSL is kind of doing. Um, source is a familiar Elasticsearch thing. It just says what fields we want back, but the query is the interesting tidbit. So the term stats, the new query that we've introduced. And uh, just a side note, this can be used outside of the LTR plugin. So this example right here is just a um, query to Elasticsearch. So if you have a use case where you're just trying to find these stats and analyze them outside of LTR, you can go for it with this query. Um, anyway, back to the DSL. So we're saying we're gonna do a term stat query. This um, EXPR stands for expression. So this isn't really doing anything um, fantastic. It's just giving us the term position back. What we're doing is summing the term positions. Right now, we only have one term, but you could imagine uh, multiple terms, blue, red, green, whatever. And you could sum up all of the term positions, get that as your final score. And uh, you can also specify a list of fields to query on. And in this example, we're doing term position for blue in the title. And that's the 11th term in this title and the seventh term down in this title. Cool. So just to switch over and show you guys it's kind of a lab environment that we set up to play with the um, plugin in general. Uh, so this is at 019S Hello LTR. If you pull this down, uh, if you have Docker running, you can get set up really quick with a uh, Docker Compose up. Uh, we have the Docker Compose hanging out here. Once that's uh, built and happy, you can hit up localhost 8888, kind of get to this top level, but the interesting tidbits are in notebooks. This is an Elasticsearch cloud, I'm guessing for the most part, but we also support Solar in here, if there's anyone around. Uh, dive into TMDB. This is where our specific example is today. So we kind of have this term stack query notebook. And uh, all this provides is just a really easy way to kind of 
set up a feature set in LTR using our term stack query, also the uh, painless scripting option, kind of shows you how both of those work. If I go ahead and run this, I'm going to create my feature set in LTR. This is going to log out all the scores for these two features I just added. Um, just to cover these, my first feature is uh, our classic TF times IDF. And uh, we would expect this to be pretty good since Search used it for a really long time until BM25 came along. Um, our second feature is just the number of unique terms that we sent in. Uh, we would probably expect this not to have so much impact, but maybe if we had more features, it might play along with those. You could imagine if there are a lot of terms, maybe the uh, value of TF times IDF kind of shifts. Maybe a higher value is not as good if there are a lot of terms, something like that. So here we log the features. And what this is doing is sending a query off to Elastic for the feature set that we just created. It's running our TF IDF and it's running our term position query. So for the query Rambo, it's only a length of one. Down here, Star Wars, we have two unique terms. Um, this is our TF IDF score that comes back. Um, just as an interesting sort of demonstration or visualization of what we're looking at here, these were all the grades for our judgments. And we can see that a lot of the poorer grades had lower TF IDF scores. But uh, the higher grades for being better, they're kind of hanging out towards the top here. So with this, we can kind of actually see a pretty strong correlation that TF IDF being higher leads to a higher grade. So this would be a feature that we would anticipate to have a higher importance. And if we come down here, we see fours kind of spread out all around. And there's no really strong signal just from looking at this that uh, it's helping us at all. That's not to say that this is invaluable, as I already mentioned. Maybe it can play with another feature down the line and surface something that we can't see just looking at this top level, excuse me. So just as another help for, help or, yeah, helper for this graph, we have a sort of a density plot here. And as we can see, all the grades kind of flow along the same path. There's no distinction between the grades. But if we can switch back to our TF IDF on that guy, we sort of see this correlation, all of our densities hanging towards over on these higher scores. We see these fours. So and our lower scores are mostly over here. We want to avoid these red lines. And down here, we just kind of have, uh, this is some sort of LTR lifting, but we can train a model with what we've done up here and search with it. So if you get to playing with that, have fun. Uh, it's just there to help people learn. And uh, if you have ideas for other labs or other ways of visualizing the judgments, just uh, hit us up and let us know. Um, let's see. I believe that is it. So um, here is the relevant Slack, as mentioned. Uh, if you join that, I believe we're an ES Learn to Rank channel. And there's also just an Elasticsearch channel, and uh, the LTR project lives here. So that is it for me. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Let me just uh, try to copy that and bottom link into the chat really quickly. And folks, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat or you can comment it uh, as, a, as a comment on this video as well. And we'll try to get back to you. But yeah, Dan, thanks so much for taking the time to uh, share with us today. This was really informative and um, yeah, thank you again. Awesome. All right. Bye, y'all.